right guys, so pretty pumped. We're gonna start our series off with Construct 3. Now Construct 3, I wanna do this in the flow of things from beginners straight through to heavyweights, if you wanna call it that. So Construct 3 is great for beginners. It's an event-based JavaScript wrapped IDE. It allows you to physically build games without really laying down significant to hardcore code. Now this is vital for schematics, understanding game logic, because you're gonna carry that mindset straight through with all the other softwares and IDEs that you use later in life. So understanding how code reads is a very important thing that I always try to articulate to users that are all guys that are looking to do game development. So Construct3, great beginner. I'm a little bit biased because I really do love it. It's so simple, but yet so highly capable of delivering, you could say, kick-ass games. Okay, so there is a paid version and a free version. Register, get yourself started, and we're gonna hop straight over onto the free version and show you guys some of the cool things that we can do with Construct3. All right guys, so once you've registered, you're gonna be presented with the start page that sits in your Chrome browser. Let's go ahead and click new project. Now I'm not going to run through all the functionality of the actual IDE itself because we're gonna be making use of most of the functions through this series. So you will get to know everything as we sort of progress and learn. It's no point showing you everything in one tutorial because I think you're just gonna lose um, sight of what it actually is we're trying to achieve here in terms of growing with the application, learning little bit by little bit, then consuming too much. So firstly, let's go ahead and name our project. I clicked on this new project. I'm gonna call it Disk and X, and I'm gonna keep it at retro style. I'm gonna click create. Now, yeah, you'll see we presented with a layout view. The basics you just need to understand is on the left-hand side, we've got properties. Properties equate to not just the layout view, but certain objects as well that we will add certain properties. Right hand side, you've got the project structure, directory, and everything as such. So this, we try and keep the project tidy, making use of directories, subfolders, etc. We'll understand that later on how to tidy up code. We'll leave that for a separate video. And at the bottom, we've got the tile map um, and the layout um, map. Now, this is useful background. We will have a look at that later on. But today, we're gonna to be focusing purely on a hero, a little top-down view maybe with an enemy, giving him some movement and then some actions to do something. Okay, so we're on what we consider the layout view, where we will place our objects. The event sheet is a magical place, if you want to call it that. This is where the conditions are going to be with the actions. So you would come up with, you know, if a bullet, as they show you here, and this is what I love about Construct. It makes it so simple for you to understand. They even give it a little icons just to make sure that when you read the code, you understand it. A lot of the problem that a lot of developers suffer is that they write code and they don't actually understand the code they're writing. And this often leads to, to spaghetti code and nightmare code in the sense of having to debug and know what is doing what, when you, especially when you start creating functions and things as such later down the line, where you start laying physical code. This IDE takes care of that heavy lifting and it presents it to you in a way that is easy to understand while it obviously compiles the JavaScript in the back end. So firstly, let's go ahead and create a object. Now, objects are often known as sprites. These are the little trees, the little people, etc. cetera. And, and that a lot of Photoshopping and graphics is required to make your game look great. The game is mostly, I would say, in and around its look and its feel that gives it that addictive nature opposed to just the style of play, such as first person or, or whatever, RPG. You know, you've got to give attention to detail. So the, the purpose of this demonstration is just purely going to be to go through it as quick as possible. Um, and let's keep the video as condensed as we can. So we're gonna go ahead and right click and insert a new object and we're gonna select Sprite. Now you can use the searcher to always speed things up, especially when you've got so many plugins and, and, and objects, um, which I'll show you later when search becomes vital. Let's click Sprite, let's click on there. Let's just go ahead and just fill the block here for now. I'm gonna just use a, a probably a better color, a purple, and let's fill the block. And let's give them two little, you could say two little, to the eyes, this one up, so we know that's the, the front view. All right, full beans, best retro art you're gonna see by far. Right, so then we've got a little player, you notice he's really big, we're gonna go ahead and just downscale him. You can obviously just make use of the size properties here and always make, you know, on the left hand side, if you wanna make use of what we say show to grid, this allows you to keep your project within that, in that, you know, if you're using a 10 by 10 or a 32 by 32, making sure that everything is scaled correctly for different resolutions. So we're gonna go ahead and just make that little guy there. That is our player one. Just make him a little bit smaller. Right, let's do just that. Fantastic. Right, so there's player one. 
And if we run the preview for this, you'll notice that we've got our player, but he's not doing anything. If I use the arrows, the mouse click, nothing happens. All right, so this is where behaviors kick in. Now, behaviors, once you've selected the object, is on the left-hand side. Behaviors is what you want this object to do. You need to give it the component. You could say the heart to do so, the legs, the arms, etc. And that is called behaviors. Then in events sheet, I always like to simplify it this way for our students, is that then we create what we call the movability of those arms. But you firstly need to add the arms. So in this case of movement, if I could put it simply. So behaviors, we're teaching the brain about behavior. So you'll notice there's a lot of behaviors here. We're going to run through all of them. Don't stress too much on it. So the first behavior I want to add is eight directional. Right, eight directional makes sense. It's self-explanatory, it's an eight directional movement. So if I go ahead now and click the preview, the arrow keys will allow my little guy to move about. Just like that, we've got a moving character in our first game. Now, this feels very unnatural, unfortunately, because of the fact that um, we wouldn't really use the arrow keys in, in, in the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and code that correctly to the keyboard. Now, in order to get the mouse and the keyboard to work correctly, we need to tell the application, listen, we've got a mouse and a keyboard. So again, that's an object. So what we need to do is just, once again, insert a new object and go and look for keyboard. And remember, once you've selected and added, it will disappear from the list. Let's click keyboard. You'll notice that keyboard came up in the object types. This is great, obviously, guys, to put in different subfolders because everything's gonna become very messy in object types. So it's always good to make a new, add a folder, uh, okay, in the, in the free edition you can't, but in your purchase edition you can. And we need to create folders for each gameplay, for argument sake, or whatever that might be. Right, so we've got keyboard now, and let's go and add one more in here, and let's just click insert new, and let's take the mouse, because I want to use the mouse in my top down. Let's select mouse, and you'll see that mouse is here. This gives me ability now to code the mouse and keyboard functions on our player. So let's jump over to the event sheet, and let's get some magic happening. Our first one's gonna be a system-based movement, if that makes sense. So let's just first create a group so that we know that everything is in one group. And we're gonna call it player movement. Right? The reason for this is if we choose to toggle or comment this out, in other words, disable, we get to just disable the actual top of this group and everything that sits in it will be disabled. So for bugging and testing, and obviously for need code, if you've got more than one developer, this is a vital form of of you could say development that just structure is key structure is so important when it comes to development think about the next guy that has to take over right let's go ahead and add our first event which is going to be a system-based event because i want every tech to take place in other words i want the, the every frame to do something so we're going to give it the every tick command then what i want to do is i want my player instead of using the mouse the 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 you could say directional keys i want it to face where my mouse cursor is going to face like a Diablo, if that makes sense. Wherever the mouse cursor is, I want to be able to look that way. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and add is the that, that direction. Those two, you could say that angle. I want to set the angle of that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Sprite. And then we're going to go just type in angle. And we're going to go set the angle. And we are then going to say angle. And we're going to open brackets. Everything should just pop up that you type in. And we're going to go player one, player, sorry, player dot x, which is the x player. Sorry, player dot x, comma, player dot, I don't know why I'm shorting that, my keyboard is player dot y. Oh, uh, come on, player dot y. And we're going to comma that, and we're going to say is mouse dot x you'll see that it just pops up comma mouse dot y and then we're going to set that right so okay, it should just be capital for it to pop up and that should be that should be it right so if you click on Come on, is the name of our sprite is player. Okay, the reason why this is not coming up is because I've clearly forgotten to give the sprite a name. So I'm just gonna quickly check on sprite here and I'm gonna say player. And we're gonna go ahead and add that action again. Player, angle, set the angle, and let's go now again. So let's go angle. We wanna angle the player, player one, the two different data points, which is player, you can see. X player should just pop up so you can select it player dot y and we want to mark that up with mouse dot x and 
mouse dot y. Right, you can go ahead and close that off, and you'll see it goes green, it means that it's right. Let's go ahead and add that. Now, effectively, if I move the mouse cursor, essentially my player should follow him. See that? Which is great. And now I can use the movement, but wherever I move the mouse cursor, he's going to watch, which is fantastic. So that's what we call basically a condition as well as an event. Next thing I'm going to do is set the keyboard to make use of the WASD keys because that is more natural for me when I play games and I want to make sure that people are familiar with that. So we're going to go ahead and add another event. We're going to select keyboard. The keyboard you notice is now there because we've added it as an object here. If we never did that, it would not be selected here once we said add a new condition. So we want to go now and say if key is down, obviously, we want to select the key of choice, which we're going to say is W for up. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to say done. Now I've got keyboard and it reads as follow. Keyboard W is down, do an action. So in this case, I'm going to go player and I want to simulate a control and that control with W is down is going to be pressing up. Okay, so theoretically he should go up now when I press the W key because I'm simulating that control. But before I do that, I want to make sure that on the layout where the little character was, I want to disable the, the, the keys in terms of the direction keys. So we're going to disable the default controls and then go back to event sheet. Now the arrows will not work. Yep, uh, the W will. And he goes up, but I can't come down because I haven't created the other keys. So what we're going to do is we're going to go there, Control C, we're going to Control V, the different ones, and just go ahead and double click and change that to a D. Done. We're going to go ahead and change this as well to an S. S done. And we're going to go ahead and change this to an A. Right. Done. Then we're going to go ahead and just change the D to the right hand side because that would be right double click there we're going to simulate right and s is for down simulate down and then we're going to go ahead and simulate to the left now if we run this we should have our awd keys working and there we go fantastic that feels more natural so there you can see we've got our player now with movement and he's able to look at where the mouse cursor is right which is fantastic the next we want to do is basically add an enemy and then we're going to add some conditions to engagement between player as well as enemy so we can go again and do just that we can go right click insert a new object drop down to a sprite most commonly used and we're going to go ahead and create a enemy make them a bit let's make him blue yeah use that tool and give him some red eyes all right that and we're going to go ahead and close we're going to just scale him down or we can use the right hand side here and just go 32 times 32 so that we know his size per these blocks because that's the size of the grid and we're going to add a movement to him so let's give him a sign movement so we can click on behavior we can use path finding we're going to go through each behavior guys so don't stress too much we're going to go ahead and let's give him the sign movement let's do that be pretty cool then i want you to go ahead on the left hand side of the behaviors gives you a bit of options on what you can use so yeah we can go and select maybe triangle that'll allow him to move up and forward we can use the period of five bring him nice and close here and let's run it he should move left to right right so there he goes he's moving left to right it's a little enemy but you'll notice that when i touch him nothing happens so let's go and create something that we know that we're engaging with this little enemy Okay, so in most cases, behaviors is a critical thing because if we wanted him to turn to this little player, we would use a line of sight and a lot of different other behaviors. But we're going to look at that in different tutorials. So let's add some engagement. Let's go back to our magic sheet, I like to call it, where the magic happens. And let's go and basically add a new event. Now, I would again group it, but I'm not going to, uh, we could probably just group it. Let's call it attack. Why not? Let's keep things properly create a new group and let's go and say add an event and we're going to say player so what's going to happen here is we want to create now something where we basically can give a sort of action between player and enemy so yeah i'm going to add the collision so let's go player and we're going to look for the collision on collision with another object which is self-explanatory or it's overlapping but we're going to go with on collision 
on Collision. In other words, we can then select the enemy, which is known as Sprite, which I'm going to change shortly. Bad habit there again. Let's go ahead and rename this. I'm going to call that enemy so that we know we're dealing with enemy and we don't deal with player. So there you see player on collision with enemy. That's a condition. Do something. So in this case, let's be creative. Let's go and give him a destroy just to show you how simple that would be. So we're going to go on, 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 on collision. Let's destroy the enemy. Let's say this was a tank driving over this, uh, a bicycle for argument's sake. Let's destroy that. So we're going to go with the destroy and we'll type that in. Destroy. So effectively, if I now touch this enemy, he's going to destroy and he is dead. All right. So let's be a little bit more creative than that because I think that just doesn't do it as much just justice. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's go back to our layout and let's add another behavior. Right. So let's say the player is going to get hurt when touching the enemy. That so makes a bit more sense. So let's go to behaviors. Let's go and add the flash to give it that feel. Let's add a new flash. Right. And we go back to our event sheet and we'll say player on collision is the is the condition. We're going to go ahead and say player because we added the behavior flash now we're up here let's make him flash for 0.1 for a duration of 0.5 seconds so let's click done and what should happen now is he should flash so if he touches and there you can see he shows that he got hurt for 0.5 seconds all right guys so that is how we use event sheets with layouts and very simple based behaviors to get things done now, often the parameters on the left hand side, it does carry a bit of weight and it does allow for extra things to do, but I like to often just code it in on the event sheet. But this is a great introductory just to show you guys how simple it is to lay down conditions and events with regards to, um, with regards to Construct 3. I think you guys are going to find it extremely fruitful moving forward to be able to develop kick-ass games. We're going to be doing that over the course of this, um, this series. Uh, but that is going to conclude for our first tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys in the next video. And we're going to give the AI as well as the player some, some more behaviors and some functionality and show you some more advanced tactics. Thanks again, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell down below. Videos will come out daily. Catch you guys in the next one.